Hello, and welcome to the Compass Podcast. I'm William Foxley, your host today. Uh, really excited. We got Didar from Zive, which is a Bitcoin mining company of Kazakhstan. Uh, obviously, the region has had a lot of political turmoil recently with a lot of uh, revolution coming from uh, recent oil spikes mandated by the government. And now we see that there are actually Kremlin mandated troops in the region as well. Uh, suffice to say that Bitcoin mining this year has been a large player within global macro scale and uh, very welcome or very thankful rather for Didar to be joining us today. Didar, how are you doing? Hi, Will. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah, so I see that you're in Omaha currently looking at some Bitcoin mining sites here in the U.S. And that's because uh, the region you're, you're home from, it's been it's kind of struggling recently with some political turmoil. Uh, just kind of open up the conversation, give a roadmap. What's been going on in the region? Uh, there's been a lot of report, uh, reports, obviously, from Reuters to ABC to the AP talking about what's been going on in the region, the, the differences between uh, the authoritarian regimes kind of stepping up or stepping down, uh, the Kremlin getting involved, China kind of looking over the border and saying, like, should we get involved? Uh, can you just kind of give us like the 101 uh, facts for the situation currently? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, from one, one side, I have like access to this Western media from the United States, from Europe. I read it and uh, like main uh, articles are about Russia in kind of invading Kazakhstan. But it's not like this. I will give you some brief explanation. From other side, I have like uh, Russian media uh, in our region telling that the United States or like Europe countries are invading internal politics of Kazakhstan. So it's interesting. You have like these two sides like uh, blaming each other for what's happening in the region. But actually, uh, I think the problem is simple. Uh, we have this uh, hyperinflation after COVID and we uh, like ordinary people just have the same salaries, but the food and everything uh, prices went up. And the final point was uh, these uh, fuel prices. They went up like 50%. And that's how it started. Like people just got out to the streets to make like peaceful protests. At the same time, uh, we have these uh, political clans inside the country who wanted to exploit this opportunity. And uh, they, uh, they, I think, they tried to uh make the peaceful protests uh, and uh reach their own goals so what we see now it's kind of political uh clash of clans so we have this former president and uh like current president and we have groups interested in like gaining power in the country so they're using uh their own goal or they are trying to achieve their own goals by using just ordinary people. And I believe that uh, everything what happened, now the situation is stable, uh, will, uh, will will in the end be in advantage of the just uh, normal, ordinary people and Kazakhstan will benefit from uh, these protests. Uh, Russian troops came, but uh, they are not uh, active in the uh, country. Only, I think, 2,000 people, 2,000 military came and our own army is around 100,000 people. So they are only protecting protecting some uh, important governmental infrastructure because uh, our president, current president, I think has some doubts about our military elite because uh, uh, head of national security is in, in, in jail now because he's uh, like blamed to be one of the main uh, organizers of the riots. So uh, because president doesn't uh, trust uh, these military elites anymore, so that's why he has to protect some uh, important objects. But the active part of the... Uh, military of Kazakhstan military is doing some actions to make uh, the situation more stable and I think now it's good because uh, we had this internet blackout for about a week and uh, today internet is back in some regions and uh, we could uh, restart mining operations uh, and also I wanted to give uh, the brief explanation that the main riots happened in the south of Kazakhstan and uh, mining operations are concentrated in central part and in the north. 
So it didn't affect actually um, Bitcoin mining because uh, no real uh, riots happened in that regions, but uh, because all uh, internet was uh, blocked by government, uh, that's why we saw no hash rate for about five days. First of all, I want to talk about the Russian influence in the region, which of course is definitely, I, I think a lot of people in the US and then Western Europe are pretty wary of Russian interference in anywhere in that region. If you look at Ukraine, you see that there's a lot of troops yes. um, moving towards the Ukrainian border. Uh, that has put a lot of people in the Western NATO sphere on edge. And then the Kremlin as well is kind of looking at this and saying, like, we already have a situation on the ground in Ukraine. And now we have this situation in Central Asia, uh, which obviously makes it a little tight. And then obviously in um, Kazakhstan, you have anti-Russian populism, I guess you'd say, is what I've read from from news reports. And I'd like to get your analysis of that uh, just from a, a geopolitical standpoint, and then we can kind of jump more into Bitcoin mining. Do people in uh, Kazakhstan, are, are they <clears throat> pretty anti-Russia or does it depend on what region you're in or how do they feel about Russian influence overall? Uh, yes, Russian influence is uh, huge in the region, but also Kazakhstan is similar. Uh, on the north side, we have Russia. On the eastern uh, south side, we have China. So both of these giants are kind of, you know, have influence in Kazakhstan. And uh, so uh, it's not the same as in Ukraine because we are uh, territory located uh, such way that uh, all of three parts like Western world, Russia and China have their own interests and it uh, actually benefit uh, for the Kazakhstan because nobody can uh, come and just do their own politics like you know, in terms of geopolitics here uh, in Kazakhstan uh, region. Uh, so these three sides, they always like uh, try to give some benefits to Kazakhstan to make, um, uh, to, to be like a to make influence on Kazakhstan. So we have the good, uh, you know, situation when you have Russia, China, and United States who are all interested in uh, in the influence in this region. So we can, we can choose who, whom we can, uh, in some periods, uh, to uh, work uh, closely with. Now Russia, because we have this military union which allows us to use their military forces to stabilize the situation in the country but mostly people are kind of afraid a little bit of russia because they have this huge military force and we see what happening in ukraine so that's why we only um, want some of the like little uh, troops to help us to uh, yeah, deal with this situation. I mean, the government help government, and I am the ordinary like a citizen of Kazakhstan. I also want to uh, everything uh, to be stabilized as fast as uh, it could, it could be, because yeah, it affects our business as well, and it affects like our feeling of safety uh, in the country. So we want uh, we want yeah, stable uh, politic and stable situation in Kazakhstan. Yeah, it's definitely kind of in the, in the center sphere, not only of Asia, just because of its geographical location, but also uh, within like the geopolitical landscape, because the U.S. has a huge interest in maintaining stability in that region, uh, if yeah. not just kind of creating borders around Putin's Russia. And then obviously China has uh, had its fair share of interest in the region with its Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, just moving over to Bitcoin mining, though, of course, uh, with Zive and talking about how you guys are handling this situation. Uh, and we'll just go through like the, the history books for a second, the last three months. So you guys faced a power cap on the amount of Bitcoin mining that could be in the region that necessitated that some of uh, operations be ceased or halted or new construction had to stop. Even before that, you had a lot of Chinese miners moving to the region. Canaan set up a huge facility uh, for, for Bitcoin mining in uh, Kazakhstan. And now you're facing interruptions from internet gaps. Uh, it seems like a lot of miners are back online, if not all miners, because internet has been restored. Uh, it seems like it was only offline for a brief period, which I'm sure you know a little bit more about than I do. But it's definitely been like a tough year with both inflows and outflows of Bitcoin miners. So could you just give us like your little 
your perspective on Bitcoin mining in the region? Is it safe to say that it's things are calming down at this point, or should we kind of expect that there's going to be more hash rate disruptions out of Central Asia? Um, power rationing is still in the case, so we don't uh, uh, we don't have all uh, all the time like stable electricity. Sometimes during the peak time, we still have these interruptions. So in terms of electricity, what we are hearing from power suppliers, they say like uh, now it's a winter winter season time, so uh, we have a very cold winter up there so people use more electricity so that's why we have these problems but uh, from Mar- march they promised like more stable uh, supply of electricity and for the next winter uh, they say that they will do some improvements in the system so we won't face such harsh uh, interruptions because this time they say a lot of uh, Chinese miners came and uh, demand increased significantly and uh, they didn't have time to prepare but for the next year I think uh, the situation uh, should be better because now they can plan now they can make improvements during the summer time so hopefully next year we will be okay with the national grid but obviously we cannot grow uh, mining operation just relying on the national grid because they have this limitation for generating power. They need to build more power plants. What we do in Zaif, we went off-grid. We went for the uh, pi- private power plant, which use uh, natural gas to produce electricity. So that's how we, uh, that's how we diversify our business portfolio, and that's how we avoid risks of power rationing. And with internet, I think this is like, you know, unique situation when these protests and riots happened. Uh, so with internet, I I believe we will be very stable. The so only problem that I see is power rationing problem. So if, uh, if we can find ways to go off grid, or we can find ways to build more power generation in Kazakhstan, which is possible because we have a huge territory. We have we have sun. We can make solar power. We have winds. We can make wind power. So we have rivers. So hydropower. A lot of potential. Uh, but uh, with the current uh, events, maybe some of international investors will be kind of afraid. Uh, to invest in Kazakhstan because of some political instability. So first, I think we need to recover this stability to make some economical reforms to increase uh, the uh, economic situation for just ordinary people. We we, we have to, like, government have to make them happy first. And then we need to make a positive climate for investments, foreign investments to come. So that's my opinion. Yeah, definitely. It kind of comes down to the two parts or three rather political stability, energy availability, yes. and then internet blackouts. Uh, the, the internet is something that a lot of people have been touching on. And I've seen that Blockstream and others have been kind of talking about uh, wireless connections via satellite, uh, you know, Elon Musk's a whole uh, right. internet connection thing with satellites. That might come into play here in this whole situation uh, may bring more interest for Bitcoin miners to be able to be off-grid and have internet connections. Do you have a sense or a feel for how many people in the region who are Bitcoin miners and are actively working off-grid are using satellites for internet connection? Uh, Because obviously the prerequisite for, for this is like, you just need a little bit of bandwidth. Like Bitcoin mining doesn't take that much internet connectivity, but you do need like yeah. at least solid internet connectivity. Um, I feel that maybe all of the miners use just a uh, wire internet connection and uh, because they are mainly uh, mainly in the cities, so within the territory of the cities. So the most stable connection is using this fiberless optics. And the most, like maybe 99% of the miners are using it. With the satellite, now we have to think because, yeah, this uh, event showed us that we are not fully prepared for like uh, uninterrupted mining. And now I... Uh, 
I asked my team to make a research, uh, to make some uh, testing of this satellite. And because now we have like backup, but backup also is wireless, just another provider of internet. So we have to adjust our business. We have to find ways how to use satellite, like uh, in such cases to be online and to continue mining operations. And uh, I read that, some of Chinese miners use satellite, but I'm not sure because in Kazakhstan, it's not common practice to use satellite internet because everywhere this uh, wireless and uh, uh, fiber optics is available. So mostly we didn't have, uh, you know, why to do it. Uh, but now, obviously, we have. So, and My understanding is uh, U.S. miners who are off-grid don't even use satellite very often. Sometimes they have it as a backup uh, and yeah. I think they're exploring it more and more, but uh, for the most part, it does seem that a lot of people are still using wired connections or some sort of cell tower connection. Uh, one thing I noticed in your thread talking about the situation, uh, which we'll include in the show notes, was that there still isn't enough reason for people to move their ASICs out of the region. If you're going to move an ASIC, it costs a lot. We saw Chinese miners had to move it. They wanted to stay online. They had to move their ASICs. Uh, but even then, about 10 to 20% of the network is probably still in China. And they chose to either go off-grid or underground to uh, stay out of US or uh, Chinese regulator hands. But here in Kazakhstan, we see that it's probably better just to stay put and weigh out the situation, or at least according to your thread. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with how profitable it is to mine Bitcoin right now. And can you kind of give me a sense for why you wouldn't move an ASIC to the U.S. or why you wouldn't move to, to Russia or somewhere else? Yes, um, we have uh, practical cases from our clients when we uh, try to help them to move. So first, we have uh, moving from Kazakhstan to United States. Uh, it's very expensive in terms of transportation because Kazakhstan is landlocked. And first, you have to move it uh, somewhere where they have seaport, and then from seaport, they um, like and the length of transportation and time uh, it's uh, around a month, yeah, from 14 days to a month to move them. Then uh, you have these high costs. I don't remember exact numbers, but it's ridiculous when uh, we got uh, quotes from cargo companies. And if you use uh, airplane to move, then also like air cargo is expensive. So first was uh, transportation costs were very expensive. Second, uh, you have this export tax. When you export goods from Kazakhstan, you have one tax. And when you import into United States, you have uh, one more tax. So you have this double taxation. So, and uh, considering how much these miners cost, it's uh, like big number. Third, you are like uh, losing time. So you're not mining at the moment. So, and you have these risks when you transport, uh, some equipment can be damaged. So it's a huge distance. And this equipment is already used. So when you move used equipment, you have more risks of damage. So considering all these three factors, it's easier maybe to sell it locally. So you just see your costs and uh, you see the price on the local market. Maybe it's easier just to sell it and then buy a new one from China and transport it uh, to the United States. Regarding Russia, Russia is a good market, but it's very slow in pace of deploying new mining facilities. So, for example, in U.S., huge mining facilities are built like 700 megawatts, 300 megawatts, 100 megawatts. In Russia, you have Bit River with the 300 megawatts you have maybe one or two other players uh, but they are very slow in building new facilities and um, creating new projects and not much new mining companies up there so i think russia has a good potential but because of regular regulatory uncertainty they still in the gray area so uh, on the uh, law side, it's not legalized fully yet. So if you operate and in some day Putin just decides to ban it all, <laughs> you have the uh, same situation uh, like in China. So that's why I think people don't want to invest too much in Russia. But still, yeah, I think Russia in top three countries for money.
Yeah, that's definitely inter- interesting on the Russia front. We'll see it kind of play out, I think, over the next few years. Uh, with the energy crisis we're seeing in Eastern Europe because of Russia turning off the taps, it definitely kind of uh, lends some focal to what's going on with Bitcoin mining in the region. Do you think that Bitcoin miners in Kazakhstan are planning on liquidating some of their ASICs onto the open market? I've seen a lot of speculation about that. Myself, it just seems like there hasn't been enough of a reason to do that quite yet, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. I think most of the miners, like even international miners, they are mostly accept this uh, situation. So they are continue mining even with interruptions. So because I, I believe that most of the miners just uh, just think when winter season will end up, we will be okay. So uh, mostly I think nobody rushes whoever wanted to sell. They sold like maybe one month ago, two months ago when the problem occurred. Uh, but uh, remaining miners, they just continue uh, if they can and just waiting for the situation uh, to get better. Yeah, that seems about right to me. I feel like if you're going to pull out of a region, it might have happened a while ago. Uh, I, I do want to note, uh, as we're kind of finishing up the conversation here, that you said that you're really optimistic about the future of the region, uh, which is, of course, nice to hear as we're seeing all, all these like terrible things going on. Uh, can you kind of explain your logic for thinking why this situation is getting better? You said some uh, stuff earlier in the conversation about how the regulatory picture could become brighter uh, a year after Bitcoin mining has moved there, maybe a little bit more time for the energy grid to catch up to the industry. And then you also kind of talked about on the political scene, how uh, the government might have a little bit more control over itself uh, and over the region and encourage businesses to invest there. Um, yes. First of all, we have already legalized mining in Kazakhstan. So government actually supports the industry, but the problem is that there is actual energy crisis. So government wants to solve it, but uh, they need some investments to build new power plants. They have a plan. Now they want to build a nuclear power plant. Uh, there are supporters of it and uh, some people who are against this. But obviously, if they build nu- nuclear nuclear power, we have like huge generation inside the country and somebody needs to consume it. And the country is not so like large. We have only 19 uh, million of population and not so good in like growing some manufacturer businesses who consume a lot of electricity. I think there will be enough electricity in next five years. Also, uh, some of the uh, renewable energy projects are implemented and government supports it. So miners obviously are number one consumers for any power company because miners consume electricity stably. They pay uh, on time and uh, you can rely on them. So miners, uh, after they deploy their mining operations, they are uh, very interested now not to have interruptions in electricity. So in terms of potential of uh, electricity generation in Kazakhstan and uh, that Kazakhstan needs these miners to stay in Kazakhstan and continue consume this electricity to balance the grid uh, to make this all uh, power plant projects uh, really profitable. Uh, so concerning these facts, I believe that the mining in Kazakhstan had a good future. Idar from Zaib, I want to thank you so much for your time. Of course, if you yeah. want to hear more about this conversation, go into compassmining.io, check out our learn section, and you can see some of the show notes and information there. Uh, but again, Didar, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Will. Yeah, have a good day. 